The equipment necessary to perform the neurologic examination includes a pen light, a percussion hammer, and a pair of hemostatic forceps. The neurologic examination is a series of observations and tests done to answer the following questions. Is a lesion in the nervous system present? Where is the lesion located? How severe is the lesion? And is the disease worsening, improving, or staying the same? Initial observations. Mentation, head posture, and coordination and function of some cranial nerves can be directly observed. The animal will sniff and eat if the olfactory nerves, or CN1, are functional and will avoid objects in a strange environment if the optic nerves, CN2, optic tracts, and occipital cortex are intact. By observing reactions to sound while the animal is sleeping, hearing, the cochlear nerves, CN8, can be evaluated. To evaluate the menace response, advance the hand towards the eye. A blink should be observed, indicating that CN2, the facial nerves, or CN7, and their connections in the brain and brainstem are functional. Shining a light into one pupil causes constriction of the pupil tested. This is called the direct pupillary light reflex, as well as the opposite pupil, or the indirect pupillary light reflex. This test evaluates CN2, the ocular motor nerves, or CN3, and their brainstem connections. Touch the palpebrae, tickle the ears, and pinch the lips to elicit movement of these structures and to evaluate the three branches of the sensory portion of CN5, the motor portion of CN7, and their caudal brainstem connections. Open the jaw to evaluate muscle tone and range of motion. Reduced muscle tone indicates a lesion of the motor portion of CN5 and the associated brainstem region. Reduced range of motion usually indicates muscle disease. Move the head to the left, right, up and down. Two to three rhythmical beats of the eyeball should be observed with a fast phase in the direction of the movement. This is a normal physiologic nystagmus. This tests the function of CN8 and associated structures in the caudal brainstem and cerebellum. When the nose is elevated, the position of the eyeball should be level if CN3, 4, 6, and 8 and their brainstem connections are normal. Palpate the temporal master muscles for atrophy and to assess the motor portion of the trigeminal nerves or CN5. Induce swallowing by external or internal palpation of the pharynx to evaluate the glossopharyngeal nerves, CN9, and vagus nerves, CN10. Palpate the trapezius muscle for atrophy. If atrophy is present, the patient may have a lesion of the accessory nerve, cranial nerve 11, or caudal brainstem. Observe the tongue for appropriate movement and strength and palpate it for atrophy or hypertrophy to evaluate the hypoglossal nerve, CN12, and caudal brainstem. Place a finger on the biceps tendon and percuss the finger. A brief elbow flexion indicates a normal reflex. The response can be subtle. Place the finger on the triceps tendon and percuss the finger. A brief elbow extension indicates a normal reflex. Directly percuss the extensor carpi radialis muscle. A brief extension of the carpus indicates a normal muscle response. Pinch the toe with fingers or forceps. Flexion of the limb joint indicates a normal withdrawal reflex. Pain is present if the animal cries or growls. When the withdrawal reflex is elicited, there should be no obvious extension of the opposite limb. Such extension is a cross extensor reflex, indicating a lesion between the brain and C5. Percuss the patellar tendon and observe a brief extension of the stifle joint. 
Grasp the gastrocnemius muscle between the thumb and forefinger and percuss the thumb. Brief hock extension indicates a normal muscle reflex. Percuss the cranial tibial muscle directly and observe a brief flexion of the hock. Place the finger over the sciatic nerve in the sciatic notch and percuss the finger. Brief extension of the hip, stifle joint, and hock indicate a normal sciatic reflex. Pinch the perennial area with finger or forceps and observe contraction of the anal sphincter indicating that an anal reflex is present. Scraping the tip of the percussion hammer proximally on the metacarpal and metatarsal bones elicits slight flexion of the digits. Extension of the digits is a positive Babinski sign and indicates a lesion somewhere between the brain and C5 or the brain and L5. A limited range of motion in the neck could indicate that the neck is painful and may induce muscle spasms, crying, or growling. Back pain may be elicited by palpating the paravertebral muscles. Pain may result in muscle spasms, crying, or growling. Pinching the skin with hemostatic forceps and observing contraction of the cutaneous trunchi muscles indicates a normal muscle response. Superficial sensation is observed if the animal turns to cry or growl. With support, have the animal stand and hop on each limb individually to detect subtle defects in limb coordination, strength, and whether one limb is more uncoordinated or weaker than the others. Support the animal while making it stand and walk first on the thoracic limbs and then on the pelvic limbs. The wheelbarrow test can detect subtle deficits in coordination, strength in the thoracic and pelvic limbs, and whether one side is less coordinated or weaker than the other. Individually knuckle the paw of each limb onto its dorsum. It should immediately return to the correct position if conscious proprioception is normal.